All right, let's look at the OR events. Whenever we have OR, O-R, one event or another, that's going to be union, combining two things. So in math, that means addition. We combine two things together. We're going to be adding them. We do have to worry about something called mutually exclusive, though. Two events we consider mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes in common, which basically means they can't occur at the same time. Some things are going to be mutually exclusive and some things are not going to be mutually exclusive. We have to work the problems a little bit different. For instance, um, if we think about a deck of cards, um, drawing a 5 and a 10 are mutually exclusive. You can't be both of them at the same time. But drawing a 5 or a heart, those are not mutually exclusive. You can be a 5 and a heart at the same time. There is overlap. So when we're adding these together, the probability of A or the probability of B, what we do is we're just going to literally add the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both of those things happening at the same time. So in my example, the probability of getting a 5 in a deck of cards plus the probability of getting a queen in a deck of cards minus the probability of getting both. If our events are mutually exclusive, then I don't have to worry about that subtraction at the end because they don't overlap at all. So it would just be the probability of A plus the probability of B. Let's look at an example. What is the probability of rolling a 2 or a 3 on a regular die? Well, these are mutually exclusive. You can't be 2 and 3 at the same time. So I just add those together. The probability of rolling a 2 is 1 6 plus the probability of rolling a 3, which is 1 6. 1 6 plus 1 6 gives me 2 6, and I can reduce that down to 1 3rd. What is the probability of rolling a multiple of 3 or an even number? These are not mutually exclusive. The probability of rolling a multiple of 3, there are two of those on a regular die, 3 and 6. So that probability is 2 6. There are three even numbers on the die, 2, 4, and 6. So that probability is 3, 6. If you look, there's a number that are in both of these lists. There's an even number that is also a multiple of 3, and that's the number 6. So that's what I mean by subtracting off something. We're going to subtract off the probability of being in both of these groups. There's only one number that's in both of those groups, so that's 1, 6. Notice we have the common denominator, so I can just add and subtract their numerators. 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 1 gives me 4. So 4 6, which is 2 thirds. All right, we're going to change the scenario and look more at these not and or problems. So in this case, we're going to have a bucket with different colored gems. Five large red gems, four small red gems, eight large green gems, three small green gems, eight large blue gems, and nine small blue gems. Here's our problem. If one gem is drawn at random, what is the probability that either a large red gem or a small green gem is drawn? Well, these are mutually exclusive. You can't be a large red and a small green at the same time. So I, I know that there are 37 total gems to start with, so that's going to help us with our probability. So my probability is going to be 5 over 37 for the large red gems and 3 over 37 for the small green gems because there's three small green ones and 37 total. No subtracting because I can't be both of those. So my answer is 8 over 37. Now let's do a different scenario, okay, or a different question with this scenario. Again, one gem drawn, but now I want to know the probability that is either red or large. This one is not mutually exclusive. You can be both red and large at the same time. So I'm going to have to subtract. The probability of red is 9 out of 37 because there are a total of 9 red gems. The probability of being a large gem is 21 out of 37 because if we add up all the larges, there are 21 of them. And the probability of being red and large is 5 out of 37. So I have to subtract off. The probability of red plus the probability of large minus the probability of red large. And that's going to give me 25 over 37. All right, one more question from this scenario. 
If a gem is drawn at random, what is the probability that it's not blue? So that's going to be 1 minus the probability of being blue. So looking at the blue gems, there are 17 total blue gems. So that's 1 minus 17 over 37, which gives me 20 over 37. Again, to make sure you know how to subtract these, we can either type in our calculator or 1 minus 17 over 37. I can change the 1 into 37 over 37. Now they have common denominators. I can subtract the numerators. 37 minus 17 gives me 20. Again, or you can just type in your calculator either way.